a team that managed to somehow scrape their way into Europe last year, pulling off an unbelievable season last year off the back of a relegation scare two years ago. David Moyes' side, West Ham United, have pulled off a wonder season last year with the likes of Jesse Messi Lingard pulling them through, getting them through to the end of the season into Europa League qualification and locking down that sixth place and getting into European football for the first time in a very long time for West Ham United. But guys, as you can tell, this is my West Ham United preview. We're getting just closer and closer to the Premier League season. But guys, we'll march through these Premier League previews. And today, we're doing West Ham. We'll take a look at how they did last year. Talk about how I think they're going to do next year. Talk about their transfer business. And give their player of the year, breakout player of the year, and where I think they're going to finish. But guys, let's jump straight into things. I just want to start off by talking about, I think Leicester, or West Ham, my bad guys. West Ham were unbelievable last year, having a great season. They are very hard to beat, very hard to break down, a resilient defense. Unbelievable midfield of Declan Rice, Thomas Suchek, and Jesse Messi Lingard. Some unbelievable signings last year of Thomas Suchek, Tark, Sofiane Kufal. And those signings were really the reason why they were able to push on to European football. Bringing in Jesse Messi Lingard on a loan deal really was unbelievable he needed the move he needed to gain some confidence be positive get away from Manchester for a bit and he was fantastic one of the best players in the Premier League when he was gone out to West Ham and for me West Ham just haven't gone and solidified themselves or cemented themselves as a mid-table side we've always known West Ham to not be a team that spends a lot of money but if you look at where they are right now they just got into Europa League they just backed their manager the season before that, bringing in Suchek, bringing in Kufal, who nobody thought was going to be this good. Then you go in and bring Jesse Messi Lingard. Obviously, his name is not Jesse Messi, but you guys know who I'm talking about. And then they come into net last season, finishing in Europa League, and the board doesn't back the manager. You look at this season so far, they've confirmed Craig Dawson as a permanent signing. They've 100% signed him. They've brought back Connor Coventry off loan. And they are signing Alphonse Areola on a loan deal. And he just seems to keep bouncing everywhere on loan deals. And there's also a very cheap option to buy. For me, I think that is a great move. I do think they're going to buy Alphonse Areola with Daniel alone. Fabianski is getting very much up there in age at the age of 36. So it is obviously time to move on from Alphonse Areola. Or time to move on from Lucas Fabianski. And take up Alphonse Areola. For me, Fabianski is just getting too old. For me, he is a club legend. He's 36. He's aging, but he is still a very good goalkeeper for the club. I think he should back up Areola this year for West Ham. I think Alphonse Areola was very good last year in a season and a stint along loan for Fulham. And I think Areola is just going to be fantastic for West Ham. But if you're looking at improving and moving on from where you did last year and Really locking down a Europa League, Europa League uh, position and European football and solidly cementing yourself as a mid-table side. you got to make more signings than just Alphonse Areola as a goalkeeper who might not even start ahead of Fabianski this year. Who, like I said, is a club legend and probably will be his last year. But it is going to be very interesting to see if they do any more business. I know um, Milankovic from... Uh, Fiorentina, the center back for Serbian, is more than likely going to come in. It looks like it's going to be more and more closer that that's going to happen, but that is still not confirmed, so that is only a rumor. For me, they need to lock him down, bring him in. They still got to bring in a number nine. West Ham's business hasn't been good for me at all, guys. Also, losing Felipe Anderson on a very, very cheap deal and getting rid of Fabian Balbuena is a good deal. But they just haven't brought enough, guys. Like I said, I think West Ham is a top quality club. A lot of great history, a lot of rich history. And for me, they should be pushing to keep this team where they are. And to keep pushing for Europe, Europe football, European football. And to keep pushing it and just keep a mid-table club. And if you look at the likes of Aston Villa, Crystal Palace, uh, Norwich. Other teams are pushing on, making unbelievable signings. And they're going to start pushing that mid-table spot. Maybe not Norwich, but I think Crystal Palace and Aston Villa... Arsenal, Spurs, Leeds, there's so many teams in around there now, you still got Everton, Wolves, that West Ham can't do this, they can't not improve, and when they're doing this and they're not improving to the squad they have after having an unbelievable year, it's gonna be 
a detriment to the fans, a detriment to the team. It's going to really put the fans in a setback and have the fans not enjoying the football. And it's unfortunate because this team should be cemented as a mid-table side or as a European football side, that be it Conference or Europa League. This West Ham team is good enough to be up there. Eventually, they're going to sell Deccan Rice, and they could do the same thing Aston Villa did and buy a lot. But that is just difference in owners. We know West Ham's owners aren't buyers. And it's unfortunate to see, and I hope West Ham can bring in some more signs because they really need it to make this team a mid-table side that can be cemented there. I've talked a lot about the signings, guys. I just want to move on to their player of the year and really the player that I think is going to break out this season. Not really break out fully, but a guy you'll talk about and know a lot more. Guy who I think is going to break out more than ever for me, depending on if he leaves, will be Jared Bowen. I know Jared Bowen is being talked about quite a bit to be leaving to the likes of Liverpool to be a backup winger. I don't think he should do that. I think he needs to take another season at West Ham, really prove himself, really solidify how good he is. And I think that's where he should do it. I think he should do it at West Ham. I think he's going to have a brilliant future ahead of him this coming season. The player of the year for West Ham for me is obviously Declan, Declan Rice. Declan Rice for me is unbelievable. One of the best defensive midfielders in the league. One of the best ball passers, ball carriers. He is confident. He carries his head held high. He is one of us. He makes us laugh. He knows social media these days. He is just quality. And I think he's going to be the Premier League player. Or not the Premier League player. I think he's going to be the West Ham player of the year. Where I think West Ham will finish. I think West Ham's going to finish 10th. That is quite far back from where they finished last year. I know that. Actually 10th or 11th. I do feel 11th. But the reason I haven't been 10th or 11th. Is just because. They haven't improved. They're in two competitions. Europa League. And then we know it's a Thursday Sunday football mix. When you play in the Europa League and the Premier League. And for me with the lack of depth West Ham have. And the not such a. They don't have a deep squad at all. I feel like that's going to be a real detriment. And I feel like you're really going to have to prioritize one competition over the other. And I hope they prioritize the Europa League because I feel like they can do something special and the fans would love that. But I just don't feel like they have the depth to ride out both competitions and really play in them extremely extremely competitively, really. I just don't think they have the squad to do it. And it'll be very interesting to see if they make any other signings. I really hope they do to keep themselves competitive and to push higher in the league. And Europa League, but it's going to be very interesting to see what they do, guys. That will be my West Ham review. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Drop some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of West Ham's summer so far. And what you guys think they're going to do in the rest of the transfer window. And how they're going to do in the next part of the season. Let me know what you guys think of my predictions and my opinions on West Ham. Drop a comment down below. Hit the like button. And if that button's red down below, it said subscribe. Hit that sub button, it means the world to me guys, and it really helps with the channel, and I want to bring you guys the best content possible, with the best quality possible, and I'll keep pumping out to you guys as much as I can, and I will see you guys for the next one. Peace guys.